it's nearly reintroducing yourself, but on a version of who you want to be. Oh, damn. I like yeah. That. So, Tyler, what are the – you did the strengths and weaknesses exercise. What did your – Yeah, correct. You got back from heaps of people. What did your mum say? So, got mum's back actually yesterday while I was up here. So, um, yeah, it was – I did the what is it like to be around you, strengths, and then weaknesses as well. So, yeah, she started off with like what it's like to be around you. She said, easy as I see so much of you and I can tell when you're focused on something else and not in the mood to talk much. I love when you're up and about – and the days you would come in, sit on the kitchen bench and chat away to me about anything and everything. You're fun to be around and I enjoy to be around you. I love that you listen to me and most part of it agree. No judgment even when we don't agree. And then weakness. Um, sometimes you can be impulsive, not always bad. But on big decisions, I feel you need to take more time and sit on the ideas a little bit longer. Once you make up your mind on something, it tends to happen straight away. Not always good. How do I know this? Well, once again, I'm like this. We are very similar and I can tell you as soon as you start to discuss the idea and if I don't agree with you, you get cranky and get pissed off. I only see some points as negative. So me, but with age, I've learnt the hard way of what it is and sleep on your ideas and talk about them. After I've talked with someone about them and give myself time to actually take in what it is I want... It's not so defensive just because their ideas are different mine and not to support them. Sometimes you take on too much at once and I worry that <laughs> this doesn't leave time to yourself to take in life. It goes so quickly and take the time for yourself and those you love. So that's where we're a workaholic. <laughs> Wise words from mum. Yeah. Wise words. Pretty fire. So yeah, she's yeah. taken... When did I do the exercise? I, oh, it's taken like nearly a month, I reckon, to get back to me. So I thought she sort of forgot about it. Um, and then, yeah, when I got up here yesterday, I was like, damn. <laughs> she's thinking about it. Yeah. God damn, mum, I'm an action taker. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So she's put the heat on me. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make my decisions and then figure out what I'm going to do on the way. Oh, yeah. man. But she knows. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's a bit of a self-reflection nearly as well. So Yeah, what do you mean by that? Like just seeing it... Um, when she says it, like I actually can like self reflect on it and go, fuck, I am impulsive. Like I just, when I want something, I just do it. Have you got any examples? Um, oh, probably in just like buying stuff, even like if I want a new outfit, and that's where I've always probably worked so hard and not gave myself the time. Um, is like I just, if I want something, I just want to have the flexibility to be able to do it then and there. So that's why, like, I nearly work and have that workaholic trait to just do it. Um, so yeah, it's been like an impulsive way because i'm like well if i want something i can buy it like and then yeah it's obviously now i've got that workaholic trade of like fulfilling my lifestyle i've got to work hard um to live so yeah i've had to become a bit less cluttered probably in life as well and just not be impulsive um and then yeah wind back and that's obviously what we've tried to overcome as well yeah but also working smarter like just balancing yeah 100 percent balancing and putting that in there as well and not feeling guilty like i love i love and hate the hustle culture so much yeah, yeah. personally because you have to hustle yeah and you should be hustling on what you love but it's finding finding the tolerance because burning out's no good yeah no good <laughs> Over and, that's a it. Time. and you can get better results and bigger um like bigger results and closer towards your goals more quickly when you have when you know exactly what you should be focusing on yeah. otherwise you'll spend you know 10 years doing something and be like oh if I just had this one conversation with someone and I wasn't scared, I would have got everything that I wanted. I want to be in a much better position. Yeah. And that comes from a little bit of focus. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had to yeah, slow down and then that's where, yeah, the self-development side thing now, like, made me slow down nearly as well. Like, actually realise what I want in life. Are you getting better results? Oh, 100% and feel better as well. Why? Like, what are the examples? Just enjoying time with friends like being present not trying i still probably do it at times like i'll go somewhere and catch up with friends and i'm like all i think about is what's next so like if i've got to go home and do stuff i want to get home as quick as i can as soon as we're done the task i've done with them i will go get in the water on a sunday with the missus and like a few friends i want to be home because i know i've got to do abc like and that's where as we hit on even last night and the um set the standard call like the time anxiety and in my head i don't write stuff down oh, i do but in my head it plays something fierce because i'm like i got this this and this do and then i get frustrated and then my anger comes about like 
Yeah, so it's just crazy ways to look at it. So. What are the consequences of that? If well, you go relationships down. suffer as well because then people realise and they're like, well, he, why does he want to be out of here so quick? Why doesn't he want to be around me? Like, and I probably don't realise that in the moment, but when they go away, they're like, oh, I won't text him again. He's always in a rush. So, yeah. Self-reflections even happen right now when I'm saying this. I'm like, damn, I've got to slow down. <laughs> That's one of the best things about podcasts, though, is having all those self-reflections because yeah. you're in a, a process where you can. What about in terms of the strengths and weakness story with your dad? Yes, yeah, so I've got strengths. I'll even touch on with mum now. So then she, yeah, yeah, she flicked over her strengths as well. So she wrote, now, now these you have many. You have great empathy for people. You are driven to, the better, to be a better self. That only needs to be better for you. Not everyone. You have recognised the anger that you had as a child and have given yourself the skills to deal with this as I failed to do when you were younger. And that, like, right now, that, like, I nearly cried yesterday. Like, at, when she <laughs> said that, I was just like, oh. And even now I get, like, emotional about it. I'm like, oh, damn, that's hard. Um, you have a great work ethic and this shows all through you do. It's only, it's not only work. You have a strong passion and love for people and everything you undertake. You're always willing to help your family and friends. Above all, you have made me proud. Proud of the person you have become in every way. We may have clashed heads as I needed to be able to handle your angle better. But it always came from a place of love and I knew we were always worth it. I could never stay angry at you. You, you never sulk, you just moved on. That smile of yours lights me up of life and those around you. I knew it from the time you were born and I saw those dimples. That people will always gravitate towards you and you would always have the heart forever. Love, mother, mother duck. Mum's the best, eh? Oh, it's just <laughs> when I read it yesterday, eh? Like, like, yeah, I had a few friends do the other ones and that and go through them. Like, and it was just like, I was like, damn, that's deep. Like, once you, like, I read it a couple of times and I was like, this is, this is deep. Like, oh, yeah, well, it's an opportunity to give, like, especially asking that feedback. Oh, it's how many sure. times do people get to tell someone about someone unless yeah. they regularly know or have permission to do so yeah and like creating that self-awareness and that space for yourself wild and especially yeah. you get to ask it from someone that you love of course it's going to be crazy like that for you what were the patterns what what, what were the patterns in terms of your strengths and weaknesses and slowing down <laughs> literally yeah. probably yeah like weaknesses come like my partner jamie she said like sometimes when she's around me she doesn't know what's going to tip me Mm. So, like, if I'm angry or, or upset, like, it can be, like, a ticking time bomb nearly um, of, like, if, I, yeah, like, I'm in a rush in that mode, like, she doesn't know where to stand. So, that's something I've had to really focus on. And when I do get in that mode, just either say, can I have a couple minutes? And still, I'm still practising to this day because I still do get frustrated. Um, and just, yeah, trying to understand where it actually stems from. Mm. So Any other patterns? Nah, just... Probably giving like out too much. Your foreman, your dad, and you had other people that you some friends. Yeah, so stuff. foreman. So, so, same but what was like the pattern? What was the the main thing you thought? Probably giving too much. Ooh, yeah. I, that's the story of everyone, eh? Yeah. Like, so I'm, like literally, yeah, filling everyone else's cup before I fill my own. I, I literally was coming up with like a methodology the other day in terms of was thinking what are the most common problems that we experience in the modern world as an individual. One is a fear of posting on social media online. And it's not the actual posting on social media. It's, a f it's like a fear of being seen by everyone by who we truly are. And if you're not comfortable in posting on social media, most likely you're not comfortable with inside yourself because you're afraid for people to see you for who you truly are. Yep. Interesting when we think about you in the start of our coaching journey to where you are now, you're like, oh, I'll just do anything on social media. I don't care, I'll post it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Like, oh, nah. Um, there's one. The second is a money mindset, but in terms of not just money, but scarcity, time, money, all those other things which affect people from moving forward and having a good relationship with money. Like for me, after working on it for a long period of time and seeing on the news, and this triggered the hell out of me, seeing on the news hundreds and thousands of cars lining up, or well, just thousands of cars, so sorry, that was not hundreds of cars, <laughs> thousands of cars lining up for Boxing Day sales at Harbour Town. I'm waiting hours in line so they can get a few sneaky discounts on maybe like 10 items to 20 items. Holy shit. Like that for me was like the efforts that people going to to save money was like if you really want and valued something, just pay the good money for it. Like or try to make more money. Crazy. So that's one thing that blew my mind. And then the third thing 
is literally people giving too much yep. to others. And that come in. I thought it was just the top two, but it was literally yesterday, the day beforehand, because we're creating new core stuff. I was like, wow, it's like giving too much for other people. And that blew my mind. And it's crazy that you have that reflection. So if yours would be giving too much to others and presence. Yeah, 100%. Not being present in the moment. Right. And just, yeah, not being aware of what's around as well. And just keep going, what next? So. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So you come in, you're part of Set the Standard community. We've done a whole bunch of one on one coaching. You've completely, you know, transformed with some stuff has been like amazing to see what do you think for you recently besides running a oh, comes 120 kilometers 114 kilometers you run for 24 hours right crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> besides me tyler run for 24 hours guys nuts like it's not just like oh i did a 100 kilometer run in like 15 hours or something like that like it's like whatever it is or 20 hours or he did he run for 24 hours straight crazy and finished on new year's that photo of you with the firework in the background yeah wild um but you've had some pretty like interesting stories that I think are really inspirational. What are what are some stories that you think that you could tell like from beginning, middle, and end that have been powerful for you recently? You know, two thousand and twenty two and two thousand twenty three in terms of self overcoming. Because majority of people listening want to be the best version of themselves. They want to excel their business. They want to get to the next stage. So if there's any stories that you can think of that that you can use an example for you, I'd love to hear. Them. Yeah. Well, as of late, probably my network nearly as well like so I've always been yeah surrounded around people party I was always the one who was the party animal would <laughs> were be, you oh yeah I would just be the the funny guy yeah. like do the dumb shit um like what oh just whatever like if someone asked you to do something I'd do it like just jump on a yeah, table yeah yeah jump it like just do stupid shit like, <laughs> like and what? just inf- oh <laughs> just all sorts like yeah <laughs> one example Let's go on think. what's one oh. stupid thing you do when you're drunk as oh. Oh no, nah. Good. Like even, oh, it's probably not stupid. I could say like just more like get the girls, like that kind of like I wanted to be known to be the start of the group, like be mm. the yeah. So it was probably nearly not the stupid things. It was obviously some stupid things, but it was more yeah, be the cool guy, of the group of get the girls, pick up the girls, and do all that. And like, yeah, it was pretty nuts. Like, and that was like, so I left school at fourteen and. and pretty much from then on like I sort of went to work for a few years but then being around people that are older and in the trade industry as well it really flexed and shown on me of like that's what I wanted because that's obviously sometimes the talk around the it's factories like, and the it's sites it's be- what everyone values yeah right? what everyone like values so is validate like, you as a yeah man. validates so me. I'm a man because yeah I I've had girls. sex with this many girls I've slept with this many girls like it really becomes a thing um and that's probably a rabbit hole I went down till I was probably 19 um yeah, and then, yeah, like, so I was 19, met my partner now, and we've been together seven years, so, like, and then when I did, like, everyone's like, oh, I want the old Jew back. I'm like, no, that, that man's gone, like, he's gone, like, and I just disconnected with all them in a way as well. I still talked to them, but I would, didn't value our friendship enough um, for what I wanted as well and out of the friendship, so, yeah, and that's where now, like, my network now has grown and just reaching out to people it's still hard for me to do because i don't i don't think i validate myself enough for what i know um so yeah it's trying to reach out to people and let them be around me as well um so yeah that's what i've started to do over the last probably couple months is really reach out to people and talk to people and get the same people that talk the same language we nearly do as well oh have you got an example of when that resulted in a win for you a fair bit so Jai, one of my close mates now, I met him probably over a year and a half ago. Um, And like he even says when he first talked to me, he realised I was a bit of a lone wolf. Um, And then me and him have just grown and that's where it's probably evolved from meeting him and then meeting his network as well and then jumping into OTC or Set the Standard now. Um, And just seeing how many people are actually on the same journey we're all on. Um, Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's just to see... Everyone's out there to better themselves, but there's not many that actually want to do it. What results has that given you tangibly? Time to slow down and actually talk to people in my corner. And they have confidence in me as well as me having confidence in myself. And what has that manifested you? What's the man I am today? So, yeah, it's... So what results specifically in terms of business, health, mindset, love... 
Like they're all the things that people want. People want more money and success. They want to be recognized for achieving good things and they want to be scaling and growing wherever they are. They want to have really good health and they want to have love. So what are the wins in terms of either success, career, relationships or health that you've had? Yeah, well, relationship shows for myself. So as me and my partner have been together seven years. So like before that, I wouldn't, wouldn't have a girlfriend for over six months, if that, because <laughs> like, I'd just get sick of it nearly. But recently, what's like um, a recent win? Have you recent win, a- like just... Getting engaged. That was a big yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that, a big one? Yeah, that's a big one. Like a big stepping stone for me and realising and then just having family and friends that now have realised what I am as well. And that's like, confirmed a lot of stuff within you. Yeah, confirmed like who I want to be. How's that made you feel? Yeah, really good. Like it's gave me the, not validation, because obviously everyone does chase validation, um, and especially when it comes to your family. Um, so yeah, it's good to know like they're supporting the journey I'm on. Mm. What about any success or financial wins? Uh, business success would be the old man, um, which has been a hell of a journey on its own. But yeah, him and me like trying to not clash, obviously with the stuff we're going through um, as well. Like so, yeah, that's a, probably a big win. And me actually, not just I re- reflected this morning. Like, even though I'm sort of putting the heat on him, and he's sort of trying to tell me to just ease up, it's like. I'm actually knowing what I want now. Um, so it's good to know, like, I'm going in the right direction of how I feel. So it's probably a big win in business, like, that I know that's what I want now. Because obviously, we, as I said, I went through a few stages there where it just got too hard. And I was like, I don't want to do this. I want to do something completely different. Like, I changed my mind straight away because it just <laughs> got too hard. And the scary conversations come up. You, like, have this conversation with him. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But, but then, like, I'd, like, text you. I was like... Oh, no, nah, I don't think I want to do this anymore because I just didn't want, to have the, <laughs> I didn't want to have the conversation with him. Like, so yeah, business has performed like massively just with me and him um, and knowing like me voicing how I feel now more, not just shutting off. I still probably do shut off at times, but trying to be more aware of my unconscious. So yeah. Have you got an, ex- uh, an example of a story when you had to have a conversation with your dad and it was making you shit your pants and you went in and you lean in and you had the conversation? What was that conversation like? And then what was the like win at the end of it? Probably even the letter, which was massive. Explain so, us the story, man. Start at the yeah. start. So <laughs> obviously it. this was, was it, it was at the start when we first started one-on-one and obviously we first few weeks we were sort of trying to dig deep on what we actually wanted. Um, so we started that one. What unravel. do you want? What was the thing that you wanted? I want to be able to take over the family business with like not trying to prove everyone else wrong, like doing it for me as well. So that's where like, yeah, come from like, I don't want to be like, all right, I just need to take the family business over because it's in the family. Like yeah. if I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. But And you've been doing it for 15 years now, right? Like you've been working yeah, 13. in the company. Thir- so, yeah, so, thir- so I left school at 14. Yeah, and you've been doing it for, you've been running this business essentially yeah, working for 13 it, years. Yeah, so I've been working in it and knowing from sort of day dot, like the end result, really, that yeah. I'll eventually take over the family business. Yeah, so, now you're so close. yeah, it's something so big. It's like I've known from day dot, and even there's like a magazine that from the horse event mum and dad do, and there's like a little snippet of like, what do you want to do when you're older? And I think I was like 10 or 11, and it said, I want to take over my dad's business. Um, oh, like, that and that's is at like the 10. Best. I'm like, how this. did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so like it's something I've always wanted to do. So, yeah, obviously, going back to the letter, like, so, so why did you have to write your dad the letter? What did you say in there? What were the struggles? And then approaching him, what yeah. was it like? How'd you feel about it? And then... So obviously, yeah, we wrote it, wrote out what I like, want in business, what I want in life, what I want from him um, and mum and that as well. Like, so I had to sort of explain everything from like A to B of like how I want to go about it, but as well as them and then making them, obviously trying to make dad pull back, enjoy his life a bit more um, without him feeling he's lumbering too much on me as well. But... Yeah, me slowly stepping up the ranks and getting to the stage of eventually taking over the business. So, yeah, it was just a letter to pretty much write and state everything instead of just going in sort of blind eye in a way um, and going through it. So, yeah, we sort of – I talked to mum about it because we're obviously very close as the strengths and weaknesses tell and, like, she's like, you can't do a letter just because he won't – he'll do what I sort of do. Like, you'll just skim over it and go, oh, yeah, cool, whatever. So, yeah, that's where I sort of – memorized it in a way printed it off and then we just sat down and talked me him and mum and it was just like weird because like I knew 
or mum knew, but then mum had to talk to him about it as well. <laughs> and I didn't know. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know. When we started the conversation, I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, it was like emotional as well, like to really show, because obviously me and dad spend a lot of time together at work. So emotions and that don't really come up in a way of father son because we try to sort of separate that in a way as well because obviously then your home life becomes yeah just becomes too much so that's how we've got through the last 13 years as well as keeping a nice home life and a business life um which is hard to do but we got there so yeah just sat down talked about the letter went through it all and i sort of had to as mum said in my weaknesses like i wanted to just take over the business on that day and I was like, this is what I want. And she's like, yeah, but you have to be patient. Like, we can't – Dad's had the business 30 years. He can't just let go. Like, it's his baby. And I was like, no, but I want it now. I like, tried to put the heat on him. But now, like, I reflect on it and think about, like, everything now we are worked over. Um, like, it's just – like, I need to slow down and let things – as I said to you when I said I didn't want to do it anymore, I was like, no, this has got too hard. I don't want to have these other conversations. And you're like, what's a year? What's two years? Like, it's not long when I've been doing it 13 years to take something over in the next two to three years. Like, so I really had to tone back on myself and, like, think about it. It's like, like, what is two years? Like, to take over a million, multi-million dollar company, like, what's two years? Nothing. Like, and it's, <laughs> yeah. So that's been hard for me to, like, actually, the same thing, just slow down. Like, all I think about is what next, what's next. And that's where I probably got those traits from my old man as well because he still is what's next, because um, obviously he's still got to keep cash flow in a business and keep running a business. So it's hard for him when you've got, I think, 25 staff, you've got to try, like, really think about where the money's coming from in a way when you've got to put food on the table for the whole company in a way. Um, so it's hard for him to validate and, like, think about you've got to just try and move on to the next. And that's where I've tried to, like, sort of slow him down and say, can we celebrate our jobs a bit more um, and do these kinds of things and introduce sort of things to wind it back to actually celebrate our work yeah, it's pretty crazy and you like even though he's had this company for 30 years it's like well you've been there for 13 of them you know what i mean like you've been there for half the time yeah. which is crazy yeah. and then like within that in terms of the generational gaps like i remember you were telling me it was like you introduced all of these like new ad, like techno like advanced technology machines into you know a woodworking company that are like the robotic type of stuff. Yeah, yeah like CNC machines. It's all yeah. like runoff programs. Yep. Yeah, it's the runoff programs. All these like programming, different machines, all these things that advanced, you know, for what you specifically do. Then there's like a generational gap between your dad using technology and how you use technology. And then there's like communication gaps and, you know, certain things that you use. What do you think for you that you, like you integrated, might be like communication or something, that worked really well for you in terms of helping you and your dad's you know, relationship, getting results in business through communication. Because one thing that you were talking about beforehand in terms of, oh, I've got to wait one or two years, like, what is it? It's like, let's just get you to take over the company as quickly as possible as what will happen. But yeah, you have to go to put the heat on. People got to know your goals and have that emotion be like, shit, okay, we actually got to start getting stuff ready so that you can get there. And in terms of you beforehand, because I know when you were doing your stuff, you're thinking, Oh, maybe I want to start something online. Maybe I want to help run someone else's joinery shop or do this thing or have this leadership experience because I've done so much managerial and supervision work. It's been the same. I've been doing it like my whole bloody life. So you getting into the position of wanting it now and getting ready is also like a scarcity mindset in terms of instead of looking things at an investment mindset and you having those conversations and understanding your goals and getting clarification of like, okay, fine, you know, one, two, three years, something like that, we're going to start putting things in a process to get this done. Immediately removes all that. And it's like, oh, cool, now I can just show up as the best version of myself and actually do a really good job, which then, circle going back to the start of the question, was then allows you to communicate really well and start flexing leadership skills and start, you know, doing things in your company that are motivational and inspirational that also demonstrate you're the right leader for the job and that you know when you're in control and when you're the one who is making the decisions it's going to be best for everyone so what are some of the like stories that you've got around or techniques and tips that you've got around you know increasing communication and showing up as a leader yeah so a big one for me like for me is worked like slowing down but the pausing in conversations has been a massive one for me. <laughs> Tell me like, about it. What so I would always just 
not talk over people, but like if I was not like sort of in an office sometimes, you got someone sitting at their screen, so you just sort of just talk, but you're not really like you're just more in a con- like you're not aware of what's going on. Um, so yeah, like even with dad, like and him always being go go go, and me being go go go, like I'd ask him a question, and I wouldn't pause. I'd just not either like ask. I'd sort of answer the question for myself. Um, so it was like yeah, just like like reinsuring myself and I'm being a big person on like I need reinsurance just to always know if I'm on the right path. Um, so yeah, like actually asking a question and just even if it's five minutes or 30 seconds, like just sit there and go, oh, I'll just wait till I've got your attention and your time. Like, so that's been massive for me to actually, and then realise now, like once I started doing it, like I'd be talking to someone and I'd be vaguely listening and they'd just start talking again after they've asked me the question. I've heard them ask and I'm not looking. I'm like, oh, just hang on. Like, I'd sort of say, like, then tell them to just slow down. So, like, it was using it in the opposite of the reverse when I'm actually not, like, aware of the situation. But the person is doing exactly what I've done because they're probably reflecting of me as a leader. So, <laughs> yeah. Have you got a story, like, the first, one of the first times you're using it and it, like, and you worked and you're like, whoa, this works. Yeah, it was even with dad, like you'll be sitting at the computer or like at the desk and having his head down writing and I'd just like, not barge in, but walk in and ask a question without even looking what he's doing. And then I'd like, so then I'd like knock or walk in the door um, and just like say hello or something and then just pause for a minute and then wait till he goes, oh, what do you need? And then if he's still not looking at me, just go, oh, just it's all good. And then like just waiting again till he actually looks up and looks at me. And then, but then me doing that as well. So like people would walk in my office and they'd ask me a question. I'd have my back to them and I haven't even turned around. And then they'd like, they'd ask something else straight away again. And then I had to yeah, reinsure them as well to say, just wait a minute. I'll have, I'll be with you in a second. And then they'd sort of stand there and wait. So it's like creating that. And they probably feel awkward in that situation as well. Like they're just standing there in a quiet space. Like, so yeah, it's powerful to be now like conscious of it. So, yeah, it's like yeah, working with him as well and, like, and then it makes me slow down and actually process what's going on. Like, you're not just going, what's next? Does it make you feel more powerful? Yeah, in a way, 100%, because you know what's going on around your conscious. Man, I love that. For you, I'd love to know how you give too much to others emotionally or what you think that was and how you sort of overcome it. Yeah, so giving to others for me... It would be emotionally as well, but more like physical, like if a friend needs to move or do something, I'd be the first one to put my hand up and say, I'll come and help you. I'll help them for a day and just like do everything, do physical work and just not want anything in the return. Like I love giving and always have, but I just need to, to like that was my love language of like giving to someone um, and like doing things like that. But it was like I was overdoing it. I wasn't doing things for myself. I just... Go, all right, oh, who needs a hand? I'll give you a hand. But then I've got jobs to do at home and then I'd get home and then I'd be stressed that I haven't got enough time in the day to do them then get angry at the missus. Like, it just become a ripple effect and a massive cycle and that's where now, like, and when I did the strength and weaknesses, a few people said, you give too much. And, like, I was like, damn, like, they notice. How did I never know? Like, I always just wanted to help others because I, I think I always wanted to feel needed nearly in a way. Um for validation yeah yeah every single time that'll come up in yep. terms of you know when you think validation then your ego makes you feel safe by mm. doing those things when you're not doing stuff for other people and you're not filling in that void with busyness you're like i'm not safe i need to go help somebody 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. yeah it's just like doing it like you just do it and then because you're actually doing something physically as well um and you're probably emotionally just trying to be happy doing it because you want to show your friends yeah, you're happy to help them Deep inside, I was like, I've got to do this next. Like, I was already thinking about what's next for my day. Like, see, so it's hard to just slow down and actually enjoy the process of life. Crazy. And how do you think, as well, your your mindset has, you know, improved recently? And what's, like, the difference between your mindset, like, a year ago and, and your mindset now? And what are some of those little techniques? Actually doing things that I get enjoyment out of, probably. Oh! Yeah. Like so, running for 24 hours? <laughs> so well, enjoyable. Yeah, which is like <laughs> powerful for the mind. But like actually not just doing stuff because you think it's fun or doing something like just cause. Like actually – and being very present in the moments with your friends. Like because you never know. Like 
when your last day is like so really just trying to actually be present and it's as i say like we're always working on it day in day out like self-development never ends um so yeah it's just being present and actually enjoying it like even if something goes bad try keep calm but obviously if you are feeling emotions anger's never bad just depends how you use it oh you got an example of that oh this day and age like as bad as it sounds like you got to sort of tread carefully around what you say so it's just not like physically just go into anger and just start yelling at someone like going, it's all good, you might have stuffed up this, but next time give them a bit of reassurance to try and make them feel safe. Because if you just start yelling at people, they're never going to come to you for safety. Um, and that's where, yeah, I've tried to 100% just really f- let my body feel the emotion and then not sh- like show my anger in a way, but not like physically as well. Like I used to, when I was younger, I'd get angry at home. I'd go punch holes in my room or like just because that's the way I showed my anger. Like, where it's now, like, you know, I just try to be in a calmer state and, like, meditate on it nearly as well, like, of what I could have done. And sometimes you have to shut off the emotions, but it's try to be as aware of them as well. So you just lay yourself to feel them and express them. Yeah, yeah. But how do you, how it, do you do don't that? yell like, yeah. is a big one for me. Like, yeah, don't yell and scream and, like, just express your emotion of how you feel. Uh, like, I feel angry now. Can you just give us five minutes? Like, and... Be aware of it. Like, let people know. Like, yeah, if you're feeling frustrated, let them know. <laughs> like, but, yeah, you don't have to show it. And sometimes I probably do, might yell, like, might punch something. Like, makes you feel good. Sometimes it just makes you feel good because you need to let it out. But, um, yeah, it's really just trying to voice my emotions and that's been massive for me. Like, it's just, yeah, trying to be self-aware of what it's like to be around me. Well, I think there's a huge physical component to self-improvement and personal development and mindset. And I think they go one in the same and they apply very like similar ways. There's so many lessons that can be learned specifically just through going to the gym in terms of discipline and integrity and positive self-talk. I hate myself, you bitch, get it up. Um, And like speaking like that or in terms of long endurance running and running certain distances or whatever, whatever physical exercise you do, there's all these lessons that can be applied into your mindset that when you attack and show them up in terms of conversations or leading or business deals or asking for money or doing all the things that you know you should be doing but don't do for some reason. Ah, it all seems too much and I can't be bothered doing all those things. Damn it. I know what everyone feels like when they get like exhausted and they can't be bothered doing this and the motivation drops and all these other things. Like, oh man, been there heaps of times. Have you been there as well? Yeah, 100%. You know, it's yeah, like, motivation doesn't last forever. Yeah, it doesn't last forever. So there's a lot of benefits in terms of your mindset that are going to like pick you back up. So what's like your relationship been with mindset and physical exercise, especially during your 24 hour run? And like, by the way, guys, Tyler after he finished his 24-hour run. It's probably the best I've ever seen anyone look <laughs> after a 24-run easy. You just finished it like, hey, done. <laughs> like, what, bro? You just run for 24 hours. Yeah, what do you think sort of the synchronicities and benefits? Around my mindset, I've always been a person, if I do something, I'll do it all in. So that's been a big one for me. Like, if I'm going to do something, don't just dabble in it. So that's where, like, the self-development thing now, like, I've gone all in, going one-on-one with you. Like, I was scared, man. Like, yeah, you were yeah, shaking. Oh, investing, like, that much money in yourself, it's like, damn, like, what could have I done with that? But it's like, now I look at it and it's priceless. Like, it's been the best thing I've ever done. Like, so it's trying to bring your mindset around, not being unbreakable, but being to, able to understand and be aware. So, like, with my 24-hour run, the reason I lent into that, I did a half marathon, a marathon, and then I got enjoyment out of them but I wanted to just physically see how far I could push my body with my mind being more powerful. Like there was times in my 24 hour run when I wanted to quit, but like I had good support staff around me, but it was me just saying, all right, I've got to keep going. And then like a couple of times I was like, I'm quitting. I'm done. Like I can't do this. My feet are blistered. I'm stopping. And then I'd say that in my head, all right, I'm going to quit. I'm 15 hours in. And I just stopped and thought about it. And I was like, I couldn't. Like, I'd feel guilty for the rest of my life. Like, so it's really just thinking what you want and being present, but, like, literally just, like, why? Like, bring it back to your why. Like, why do you want to do it? Like, it's not to prove other people wrong, but it's nearly to prove – I don't want to prove myself that I can do it. 
So like I'd obviously started my year off with my 24 hour run. So my year now should be a breeze. <laughs> like, so like if something gets hard now, I look back and go, well, I started my year with a 24 hour run. Like I'll go for like a half an hour walk now. And I'm like, this is sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, it's literally the powerful thing I would say. And key takeaways, literally do things to strengthen your mind, but things you love as well. Well, I love how you said that, like knowing your why is what got you there. Yeah. And that's like your purpose, right? Yeah, 100%. Comes back to my purpose. So, so do, do you think in terms of some of the goals and things that you've achieved and leaned into because you've done some real difficult stuff like the past few months, that your purpose played a huge role into that? Yeah, 100%. Why? Just it makes same thing saying when I was going to quit, like just thinking about your purpose and why you want to be in life. Everyone should have a purpose. I and everyone I reckon's put here for a reason on earth. But it's really just thinking and remembering your purpose of why you wake up each day. Some people might be for family when you've got a family, but like it could be you just want to be the best version of yourself, which is obviously what the self development route's about. So it's really just honing back to remembering your why and your purpose of what you want out of life. Hey, but you've got to work for it though. Oh, 100%. Like how hard yeah. did you work to get yeah, your purpose? Yeah. yeah. It's taken me ages and still now you still change it, you still refine it. How long did it take you to get it, you reckon, even still? Was it just like the oh, whole? still now, like even looking at it, I'm like, is that what I want? Like I, you still question yourself mm. now, but it still plays a big part in your role. Like, and yeah, 100%. Like it's just, it probably took me, I reckon, four months to actually be comfortable with it and voicing it as well. Yeah, voicing it's a big one. I th it, it makes so much sense in terms of deactivating the fear state in your brain, like the fear state in your brain. Because within your brain, in terms of where you know your reptile brain is, your flight, fright, freeze response comes from, that is just from not knowing why. So when you're in a run, when you're in a business deal, when you're in your relationship, when you've got to make decisions for yourself, when you understand why you're doing everything and it means and it sent you an emotional charge, of course you're not going to back out because fear is not going to take over. Every time you go to go into fear state or your fear brain tries to flare up or tries to warn you about something, no, absolutely not. I know my purpose and my why. I'm going to keep pushing forward. So, but it takes time, energy and effort to actually dig for it and to give yourself that emotional experience and put yourself in a position like we always say in the Set the Standard community, right? We go in there and we say, once you find your purpose, go say, go tell someone in the conversation, you're saying something, saying something and you say, oh, that's because I know my purpose. And then someone always says, what's your purpose? And you go, this, and you watch the uh, reaction on their face. Yeah, hundred percent. They don't know what else to say, and that's like I got the Chinese symbol like tattooed on my hand for purpose, and everyone's like, "What's that mean?" And I was like, "Oh, it means purpose." And I've had so many people ask me, and then I like I just leave it at that with a certain few people, but they're like, "Oh, I won't ask them." Like they don't know. They're like they know where obviously it's coming from, like something like of life. People are scared to hear it, eh? Oh, it's they're so like, crazy. Yeah. They're scared to hear your purpose. Yeah, yeah, because it's like powerful right yeah, they're 100%. like ah oh, i don't want to see that yeah shit. yeah Compared so yeah it's like yeah they're like oh what's that mean i was like oh purpose and they're just like and they're like even just saying the word nearly frightens some people of like what your purpose of life is and it comes around like even come back to like money mindset like some people are just scared to talk about the money like who cares like <laughs> <laughs> well for you bro it was oh but like just you yeah, had to like, lean into it as well yeah, you know 100%. what i mean i'd love for you to tell the story of of what happened you know when you first jumped and signed on because that was like wild watching you on the camera <laughs> <laughs> yeah so obviously <laughs> finished up otc um and then yeah just yeah. overcome the chaos it's just like a, a program that we have that helps people figure out exactly what they want in life life it's like an eight-step process and if you do it you will exactly 100 percent figure out what it is and tyler did that and he absolutely crushed it so really proud yeah. of you for that and then so, yeah, we just jumped on a normal call, which I didn't expect you wanted to jump on anything. I was just like, yeah, what's up? You know, I want to do one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, jumped on one-on-one -on -one and then like sort of said it to you. And as I said it, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that because I knew you would have been straight at it. <laughs> like, and it was just like crazy to know, like, and then I talked to people and they're like, oh my God, I just jumped into one-on-one, -on -one, like finished up, obviously overcome the chaos, set the standard. Um, and I was like, I jumped into one-on-one -on -one, and they're like, oh yeah, cool, like, and like some people knew like self-development is obviously a big investment in yourself. And I was like, is it like, like, I told a few people how much it costs. And I was like, they're like, damn. Like, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I've gone, I do things all in. They're like, yeah, you do, obviously. Like, so yeah, that's where it was like. How did you feel on the, on the call for the moment? Like, I what, was what so was sweaty. <laughs> 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 like I was sitting there and I can remember like processing. I'm like, I'm going to ask Corey. I reckon it probably took me like 
I don't know if you ever noticed, but like probably a couple of times in the call because I was like would go back to like what I'd been through for the last eight weeks and eight eight modules, and I was like, how do I ask him? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I was like, it's so funny from like a coach's point of view because oh. we don't understand like when people do want to go one on one, and it's really interesting in terms of like a sales process for people, especially men who want to work on themselves and want to do self-improvement, but they don't find themselves worthy enough to actually do so. Yeah. And then you have to create this experience of facilitating, you know, this whole thing for people to help them actually go. Because remember that number three rule that we just talked about at the end is people give too much to other people. So they find it difficult to give to themselves. Yep. And if you want to change into who you are, you've got to change who you are, right? Currently, because you're a slave to an identity that you no longer serve anymore. So... To change into that, <laughs> you have to give to yourself and be proud of yourself and yeah. be, you know, feel feel worthy to do stuff. So, you know, helping people overcome that in like a short call is hard, but the emotions of the sweatiness, the shaking, the actually doing it, paying a shitload of money for something that's going to give you a reward is giving you that emotional experience to like break free yeah. from like your slave and money mindset to giving to, to yourself. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, giving that and like, you instantly put the heat on. It's like, all right, let's set up a bank transfer. It's like, oh, oh this is real. <laughs> but this is happening. Like, how'd you feel? What that do to you? Oh, it's just like I was like shaking, and I was just like, oh damn, like this is gonna happen. Like, and yeah, it's just more like coming back to the accountability of like, because like say I got off the call, and you even say it. Like, if you didn't set it up then and there, all right, we're starting. I'd either ghost you and just like not contact you because it's like I'm not doing it now. That's waste. Like I'm not. I'm not in that zone now of like, I want to get better. Like, so that's why you do put the heat on. It's a good way to go about it. Like, but it's like, I was like, oh, it's happening. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it was like, yeah, same thing. And then re- relating back to my network, like once I told the people close to me, like, good on you. Like, I wouldn't do that. And I was like, damn. Like, so yeah, it's cool to know. And like, just the feeling like of, I finally did something for myself. That's a big thing for yourself yeah. too. Like, so... For you specifically as well. I'm just going to move something there as well. One thing. Uh, so, oh no, I could just have that here. So for you specifically, what do you think, you know, that moment of investing a lot of money into yourself and the most that you've ever done, how did that improve your money mindset? Just to not, or it's money self-worth, like know what money's worth, but not be, and probably comes back to my impulsiveness to a point as well, but like, actually enjoy what you can get out of it so and really use it to your advantage nearly like because i'm lucky enough to be in the position where i could invest that money into myself not everyone is so actually use it and then not all the tools were learned but give the people if they are in that situation that probably can't afford it like i'll give them the tools as well like help people along the way without still helping myself and then obviously teaching makes me remember what i'm doing as well mm. and how did it improve like the scarcity and, and abundance part of like your own mind made it a lot more powerful to really be know what was around as well what do you mean by that like just knowing what you can do in life like literally with like with money like yeah like it's just powerful like to go through life and not just live the steps of so-called life's called now um of like go to school work buy a house have kids like actually live outside my comfort zone as well yeah, so it's like actually it'd probably like just from such a small investment like in myself and obviously going to be greater, like actually looking at the bigger picture of how I could see it from the outside. And it's now influenced your buying decisions around time, money, because you were quite, I remember when we were first working, I was like you were sort of really quite scarce. You, have a work, you clarified yourself as a workaholic, not anymore. You're yeah. just purpose-driven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're doing all the purpose-driven stuff. When you need time off, you have time off. But beforehand, it was like, I need to work, work, work. So make money, 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 money yep. to get like success, 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 success. And now it's your mindset on that's changed. Love for you to talk about that. Yeah, so obviously, I'll, I'll probably still am to a point a workaholic. Let's, like, remo- let's remove that identity <laughs> shift, yeah. all right? I am no longer <laughs> a workaholic. Right? <laughs> I, I am no, no longer, longer a workaholic. workaholic. I'm purpose-driven. Yeah. So <laughs> I yeah. just love what I do and I have to put restraints in there sometimes. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and that's where it come into. Like, I had to put restraints around my work. Like, not just go, oh, I'll stay back half an hour at work. Like, and then think what it's like to be around me. So that was, like, big. Like, and I still do to this day. I probably still do work, like, too much, but I enjoy it as well. So that's where it got hard. I was like... 
had that trait of being a workaholic, but I enjoyed it. But I don't know if I told myself I enjoyed it as well. So like it played a role in itself. So like it'd be being purpose driven and doing things I want to do now. So when I need time off work or have a bit of flexibility in work, but then voicing what I need as well. So good because you've allowed yourself to do runs. Like yeah. you had to do so much running training. Yeah. You allow yourself to spend time with your partner, have holidays, fly up here, do the stuff. Like you wouldn't have done that. No. <laughs> no and not feel guilty for myself as well. Yeah. Like say yesterday I flew up here and just walked around and like did nothing. Like went out for lunch and then did nothing. Like nothing really. Just walked around. Like <laughs> self reflected. Uh, yeah. Got which, some amazing message back from yeah. your mum. <laughs> like just did like nothing. And I was like, this is weird. Like I don't have to be anywhere. I don't have to do anything. Like it was just weird. So yeah, was, was it good though? Sometimes a bit nostalgic doing that. Yeah, it's in good. Your own head. Yeah, it's yeah. good to just relax. And in terms of you being purpose driven, I love that with the whole money mindset thing. It's crazy when you first invest in yourself when you understand the power of money and what, when you look at things. It's crazy sometimes I have to reflect on because I'll be in conversations with people and we'll be talking about millions, fifty thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and all these different sort of things of money. And I've sort of like I'm on the opposite where I spend money too much so a lot of people yeah. I know spend like find it difficult to spend money on themselves I'm like oh if I love something I'll spend it on myself yeah I still do <laughs> yeah right but if I don't do it but, but even for like my own benefits and my skills and stuff um, more now so it's more uh, my mindset more goes around uh, the whole trust thing which is a lot of leaders have is it's like cool I need more resources and people to manage in my business and I've got to pay them for that so now my mindset is more around okay one thing that I feel uncomfortable around is really leaning into those things to make them feel better because I have this thing that I've always done everything to myself, but I feel like I'm leaning into it awesome and I'm doing everything that I can like possible to lean to then and I'm um, every time the problems come up, I'm leaning into them, I'm putting them into like my client who's my, most of my clients do in this situation and how they approach it because that's how I need to approach it myself and it's been like, like amazing to understand that. So I think it's like crazy benef- benefits, especially in terms of, your own buying decisions on yourself when you first make those big like investments on on you and doing something for you gives you the power to change your whole relationship to buying spending where it goes but yeah i don't blink when i think about all these prices and stuff now like especially when someone asks for one-on-one i remember the first time that i did like sales calls bro i was like asking for like two thousand dollars and i'm like oh fuck like this is crazy. Like my heart would shake. I get sweaty and I'm like, who's putting that into me? And it's like, no, they're putting it into themselves. And the same thing comes around is now asking like lots of money for one-on-one and continuously improving that as much as demand goes up. It's like, prices is going up again. Here comes any money triggers. I've got to get, get into this and, and like evolve. But at the same time, it also happens for your role as someone who's a, a business owner, you know, with a massive business working with some amazing people and clients who are spending heaps of money for what you're doing. You have million dollar jobs, you got more than million dollar jobs, you got some that are smaller, 50,000, you got some that are a couple hundred thousand, 100,000, whatever it is. And for you understanding like where you're at and what you're doing and what you need is sometimes that, hey, if we're delivering the elite quality stuff, price is going to have to go up and I have to get more comfortable asking for that because I'm in these deals. I was like, how can you ask an improved price on your business when you need to, especially if your bottom line is starting to, you know, look a little bit shady and it's like well well, one thing we can do is we can get more work hire more people or we can just increase increase the prices a little bit and communicate around that now if you're confident at putting money into yourself and you know how to do that then you're going to be more confident asking for better prices so good wild (laughs) so good hey so i just wanted to touch on that i thought that was a great little point there um and also in terms of you with the story i'd love to hear about some stories uh with the purpose stuff for when you did, I'd love to know what your purpose is, firstly. Yep. And then I'd love to know how it's been beneficial to you in decisions that you've made and experiences in life and any examples of stories around that. Yeah, so my purpose is to inspire my family and to demonstrate self-love to impact the trade industry. So what, does that, what does that look like? Well, it comes back to your vision. So to live in a world where the tradies everywhere are happy in the workplace, embracing modern technology and language. <laughs> holy shit guys which took us all a long while to get that <laughs> that is like five months worth of work right there to get Easy, to, those, to, to those two yeah. lines yeah i'm impressed with the vision man <laughs> you you were gonna surprise me on that weren't yeah. you you've been you've been spending some time when did you nail that 
Uh, last week, I think. Yeah, yeah, was it? Sat down, done some study, and had to like literally. It took me hours. But yeah, for some Pretty people powerful. it's quickly. Some people it takes ages. Yeah. So, what, what's the benefit of the purpose and the vision? Well, knowing what I want in life, like so, I can look back if I'm doing something, if it's in my boundaries of what I should be doing, literally. So, like, I'll look back and go, "Is that what I want to do?" Like, and actually, yeah, trying to do things that correlate back to them because that's taken a lot of work as we said five months like it's like really powerful of like yeah what i want to do it means something yeah it means something and it's come from a deep place like so it's actually like a lot of work's gone into getting it so it's like i want to do things that roll back to that does it make you feel proud 100 percent. yeah proud and like powerful in a way because it's like i really know what in my life i want to do what are the all the things that you think that you would have been suffering now if you didn't have that oh probably too much comfort in a way like i would have just been comfortable with going through the process of business and work and just going through the motions and not actually doing things i wanted to do and what about in terms of stress and working too much like how do you reckon all that would have played out if you didn't have those yeah and probably not great probably would have just dealt with everything as it came but not tried to get an understanding of why it actually probably kept coming up if things kept correlating one after the other mm. and how do you think you'd feel if you didn't have those like what do you think would be like the daily emotions and experience and feelings and like your relationships oh, like probably that? have like anxiety like and like just be like worried all the time about what and why i'm doing what i'm doing and questioning myself probably daily i challenge you to get a little bit deep in this one this is a question that i've asked you before but i can't wait to ask you again <laughs> in 10 years from now if you didn't figure those out like in 10 in 10 years from now if you didn't have your your beautiful purpose and the vision that you see actually making an impact happen. And I want to get on that, touch on that vision. But what is that vision again? I want to hear it. To live in a happy world where tradies everywhere are happy in their workplace, embracing modern technology and language. Oh, shit. I like that. <laughs> oh, Because like, so, obviously you can set that standard at your work and yeah. then set the standard for everyone. Oh, I love it. That's why we could set the standard. Guys. <laughs> so yeah, in 10 years from now, if you didn't have your vision or your purpose... What would you think your relationships would be like? What do you think your health would be like? And what would be the daily emotions? Well, health would definitely be suffering. And How? Like, like just, picture, well, I went through a stage where my body was just inflamed. They pretty much said I had rheumatoid arthritis. They actually diagnosed me wrong. My hands were just like inflamed. I couldn't use tools. And what? It was, yeah. So I went through like a stage like that of like my body went to doctors, was on all sorts of drugs, and they just couldn't fix me. And then I slowed down at work, went in the office um is that just information from stressed out and working? pretty much well i've s eat very similar i saw it like a naturopath like changed my diet probably for like two to three months and now i probably still eat the same i train obviously hectic as i'm running marathons and like ultras but i'm still doing the same things but working on my and meditating like on my stress more and my inflammation has just apparently magically disappeared <laughs> like <laughs> so it's like Hey, work I, on myself, all my stress and anxiety is gone. How good? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and information. So, yeah. I'm healthy. I'm not going to get cancer anymore, guys. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, it comes back like my health would have just been destroyed because I thought like in the process, I just couldn't get out of where I was. And like the drugs obviously weren't working, so they'd give me more. So in 10 years from now, if you didn't have like essentially a vision and like your purpose, it, it, could, it could almost be a bit you've been in a hospital bed. 100%. Yeah. The way I was going and where I was going down, like the path, I would have just been like knackered. My body would have yeah, shut down probably, I reckon. And I like used to say like, and it was like a negative mindset. I'd like some days I'm like, I'm going to go to hospital today. And there was times where I, like a couple of times where I did go to hospital because I was literally like, I thought my heart was like hurting or skipping a beat, like or something like that. Like, because I was just in so much, I was in such a burnout and I'd just push through the burnout, like that hustle culture. And I went through a stage of where I think, and I just had to hustle grind and you still have to, but it's going about it a different way and not just like going, all right, I've got to work 15-hour days every day. It's a relationship with it. Oh, 100%. And understanding why. Like, and same thing, come back to your purpose. <laughs> you keep going back. Yeah. So what about your relationships? In 10 years from now, if you didn't have those things, what would your relationships look like? What would the daily emotions and feelings feel well, like? Well, probably would have left my partner. Like, even you, though we have a powerful relationship and do now, we're both on, like, we both self-develop. I, I don't reckon she would have put up with how much of a workaholic I would have been. Mm. Like I would have just been at the business 15 hours a day, come home, eat, go to sleep. Do you think that for you, a part of your motivation for investing into self-improvement is also because I believe girls are just like, 
wild when it comes to self-improvement. They'll face that shit head on. Do you think that some of it was actually to like keep up with your partner? 100% because I didn't want to feel left behind. And like, <laughs> as we always say, girls talk with emotions, men don't. So like, yeah, it's like she'd like sort of bring up stuff with me and I'd be like, like just shut it off because I didn't want to feel it. Um, and it was like, yeah, once I got down that route of like in the self-development, like she was proud of me and I was like, this is what it's like. Like, and I always probably did chase that from when we got together. Like I always wanted to try to get better in myself, but it was like once she started doing it and then she probably got in front of me and probably still is in a way, um, like I felt left behind and I was like, well, if I want to be with her, I have to be on the same route she is. So yeah, it become a powerful thing and that's where I've, the journey's probably created from as well. And that's like, I'm just assuming that you feel really grateful for self-improvement in general and actually working on yourself yeah, to keep that up and save the relationship. Yeah. yeah, Massive thing. Like I always say to people, I was like, just invest in yourself. Like it's the biggest thing I've ever done, but it's been the best thing I've ever done. And then what would your daily emotions and experience be like 10 years from now for you? Oh, my anger would still probably be the number one emotion that I'd always show up <laughs> and feel. And then probably feel guilty for when it did come up. So <laughs> I'd, I'd probably just be negative, like self-talk, but then I'll just beat myself down as well, probably. <sighs> so like, just be, yeah, like self-bullying in a way. Like I'd just, yeah, <sighs> I'd inflict myself too much pain to just, yeah, it'd just be a bad, it'd just be, and it'd just be a cycle, something fierce. Like I'd burn out till I literally I physically couldn't can and then think after a week, oh yeah, I feel good now. And then I'd just go through it again. And that's what I probably did in the first few years of business like and working is like just went hard because I was young and just thought I'm invincible um, and did it all. But And now I've actually like the last year and like developing, I'm like, just slow down, man. Just enjoy it. Like sometimes it's going to be hectic, sometimes it's not. Like, But really try to inhale and enjoy the process of life and work. And then you got your purpose and your vision. Which is powerful, like, yeah. So yeah, the last five months has been something crazy on self development side. <laughs> but yeah. Well, what's like, what's the, what's the difference then? Have you had any people give you like reflections to you in terms of compliments or say anything in terms of being like? Yeah, they probably have. Like, and that's where I hate compliments in a way, and I've had to like. So finish my run, I had to literally have a week to actually I soaked it in. Like it took me a week to like actually sit with them. People are like, I'm so proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. And like everyone kept saying you should be proud of yourself. And I was just like, yeah, cheers. Like, <laughs> and but then I knew I was saying that too. So I was like saying it and I was like, I'm just not accepting there. Like, thanks. So like I had to journal and like actually sit with it. And it took me probably, I think a week and a half to write an Instagram post. And once I wrote that post, I was like, oh, damn, I'm proud. And as I stated, like I started off with, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing that post was crazy. <laughs> See, that's one of the benefits I find on like, social media. What we're doing in the all-in program, one of the sneaky modules in there is called Dare to be Seen. And it's like you got to create something for yourself and display it on social media, whether it's podcast, YouTube, Instagram posts, real, like whatever it is. Um, got to pick it and it has to be challenging enough and we've got to approve what it is before they go out and actually like post it. So, like, for you, it's, like, already doing that. It's nailing it because it gives you that experience. Yeah, 100%. And then the people can, like, celebrate you and, like, but you got to celebrate yourself as well. Yeah. Like, and that's where it's been hard. Like, I've had to, like, and now I feel comfortable, like, when I've come up here a few times or, like, be in places, go out for breakfast by yourself or lunch by yourself. They're like, oh, just table for one? Like, yeah. And, like, it's powerful, but, like, to actually, like, give to yourself, it feels weird. <laughs> But <laughs> just little things like that. Now it just feels normal. Like I'm like, oh, I'll just sit by myself. Like it's cool. But yeah, so it's really like I've had to celebrate myself with the big achievements I have and being like, like actually pat yourself on the back. And that's where, yeah, we had to like write the love letter to myself. Like, and I'm still being in the process of doing it. It's like, don't let your ego get in the way, which is like just for the exercise, but like celebrate yourself and how far you've come. Yeah, we always think that like celebrating yourself is going to be egotistical or swanky or it's going to make you seem like, oh, I'm better than everyone else. But I think like we should be comfortable doing that. You know, if you're being completely honest and truthful for some things, you know, things that you are better in people, it's like, yeah, but recognizing that just at the same time, people are way better than you. And also people, you know, some people have, you've got lessons to teach them. And, and if you can celebrate yourself and talk about those things in a way and you remove that unworthiness, just unlocks so many doors and that makes you 
more trustworthy. The more you can't take compliments or the more that you can't express who you are is it's like, I'm not going to trust that person. I mean, one thing that I was doing for a while, which Ion Country was doing, was I was wearing bigger shirts because I liked bigger shirts um, in, the, in like the gym and stuff because they're like sweatier, they're baggier, sort of like the look of them. And then I got so used to them that I didn't, wasn't buying any like tight shirts. And I was like, hang on, an asset of mine is my body. I've been working on this for like 15 years. Get some goddamn tight clothes, bro. So I got some like tighter clothes where I'm like, you know, they'll just like be a little bit tight around my arms or whatever it is. And for me, it just makes me feel more confident. And I'm like, sweet, I need to own the fact that I've got muscles and I worked hard for them and I look really good. And it makes me feel great. I'm like, I'm so proud of myself. It's like the best thing ever. And I don't care if people think that I'm a little bit like swanky or dicky or egotistical with it because I don't believe that I am. And I don't think that I am. And I'm sure you're probably the same with like mm-hmm. your success and what you do with the discipline and the grit and the runs and you know, this beautiful relationship that you've got. Wow. Yeah. Be proud of yourself. Yeah. What, has, has your dad given you any compliments since you've been on the journey? Or? Yeah, probably a little bit. And it took me a while. Like I, I probably wanted him to validate me first and he probably was one of the last. <laughs> of course he is. Yeah. And like, as we said, like <laughs> with my running and that, like it took him a while to sort of come around. Um, like he, with a running, it's obviously sort of a solo journey. Um, so he wasn't like taking me to sport or doing anything. So he's not in control to celebrate me or he can, can't visually see me putting in the work week in, week out till the big day. So probably like, a month out or even close up two to three weeks out like we'd be at a dinner or something but he does know what Tyler's doing like <laughs> he would tell everyone and I felt awkward as a like he'd bring it up and I was like oh, I don't want everyone to know but then I like I sort of got comfortable around it so like it took him a while to probably celebrate me to actually realize what I was doing was real like it wasn't just a stupid goal that I wanted to do like and then that validation coming up felt cool like but we all chase validation from our parents, which is obviously they brought us up, which is hard to get your head around, but you got to try not to. So, yeah, it was like really celebrating it like around him, like yeah, him, letting him soak it in. Eh? Soak it in. Like, and well, that you're doing me. stuff that he could never do. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, shit, I can't do that. It's crazy. Yeah, and that's where it's hard. Like it, ego plays a big role. Obviously, yeah. coming back to working in the business with him as well as him being my father. Yeah. On the, I'm yeah. supposed to be teaching and coaching and mentoring that's where it's Tyler hard. and you're like, motherfucker. I'm your dad now. <laughs> yeah. And that's where it's crazy. Like you look at everyone and like, as we say, like kids these days would like know how to use a computer better than us at 10. Like they've learned technology is becoming so big and so powerful in the world. Um, like it's just crazy how much quicker the humans are developing now. So it's like once I have kids, they'll probably know more stuff than me and that's where now doing this – I'll be able to actually like listen to them and actually not try to shut them off because they probably know a better way to do it and actually trying to open my mind to listen to what they've got to say. And learn. Kids are supposed to be your greatest teachers. Yeah. Do you have any experiences of telling your purpose to people and having it actually like their reactions? No, nah, probably. Oh, just off the top of my head, like I've said it to a couple people um, and just like the look on their face, man, it's just like... Have you got have you got a story of one? Like nah, not really. Person? Nah, not no one in, in particular. Like it's just yeah, just probably like and actually even saying it to myself, I feel pretty powerful. Like so I wouldn't say I've got a story to tell it to someone, but yeah, when I've I've said it to a couple friends even and they're just like, damn, like and it's just yeah, like they don't know what to say like it's the same thing. It just comes it just gets awkward. And <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like everyone needs to have a purpose. I, I well, I'm big on it now. Like really know like why and what you want to do in your life because it's only short but we've got to live like if you're in a job and everyone like wants to get better of himself or quit their job or do something it's like why not just do it like it, it's 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 meaning fulfillment yeah is right there for life and i've just my brain goes nuts on this because you know there's pros and cons for women and, and men so like men have for hundreds and thousands of years and for the last hundred years decades thousand years, whatever it is, we've gone through and all different tribes and cultures have done initiation ceremonies, initiation rites to figure out their meaning in the tribe and their role and their responsibility in the tribe. And then everyone relies on them for that exact reason because if they weren't in that position and they weren't doing those things then the tribe would suffer and die and they would have to not align them to say, oh, this is your shitty job. It would be like, what are their talents? Because we need to use this person for their role and what they're doing so they're applying their strengths and weaknesses and it would be challenging and so it gives the meaning and fulfillment because they're like providing to everyone and we've lost that now 
Like our culture at the moment, that initiation is finish school. A lot of us don't even go to university because we don't actually have to pay for it because the government pays for it. So people go to like uni or they just get pissed for like a few years and validate themselves for girls yep. or whatever it is or who can send it the hardest or who can be the toughest out in town and take the most amount of drugs and get the most fucked up. That's like initiation ceremony. Then it's like, oh, now we should probably start figuring out what we want to do. And oh, instead of that, let's start a family. That's interesting because women find a lot of meaning and purpose. If worse comes to worse in, in their situation, in their scenarios, it's like, well, you can have kids and be like a really good mum. And that's a really respectable thing to do because that is like obviously the hardest job in the world. But I think it is quite unfair to literally, and this is my, just my own opinion, guys, to so take a leap. It's just mine specifically. I think it's unfair to essentially plan to have a child if you don't know your purpose and your meaning because you're going to show up as someone who's not the best version of themselves and this is going to be a little bit... I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's a little bit unfair because then they experience like a version of you or learn traits in you that you could have really helped them to be able to become the best version of themselves with understanding meaning and purpose. And the more love and the more reassurance that the child has, the better experience they're going to have into this world. So it's all just prepping us to be, you know, real good parents and then also learn all the lessons from us. And if you don't do those things, I think the consequence of not knowing like your purpose and having meaning and fulfillment when you have a kid is just, they're going to teach you lessons that are way more intense. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, they teach you everything. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah, I agree 100%. You should know your purpose. And you want like... You want your kid going to school or something like it'd be cool. Like when I do have kids, I want my kid to be like, my dad's a beast. Like, <laughs> I'm proud of him. Like yeah. you want them to be proud of you. Like not like when you hear the stories of like, oh, draw something of your family and like dad's got a beer in his hand. Like it's funny to a point, but it's like, is that how they know you? Like, and that's not what I'm really about. It's just my opinion as well. But, and everyone's on a different wavelength in life. But like, I don't want to be, I want to be fully present in my kid's life. Yeah. Like, how, how good is this for one mindset? And then I'll ask you um, one more question and then we'll leave it on that. How good is this for a mindset? I love this so much. Um, I was reading a book and they br brought this up. Your great, great grandchildren are going to be creating digital assignments, probably video assignments on your life. And their great children and their great children. And they'll do the things like, oh, who's your great granddad, great, great, great granddad and great granddad granddad and granddad and let's do an assignment on those like a case study on who they were and what they are because they can just google you and facebook you and instagram you and see all of your stuff and they'll be creating presentations on you and what you did and all this stuff like holy shit they'll probably bring back holograms of everyone <laughs> yeah, right? but how cool is that yeah. like they, they they're literally going to create those things and have these amazing experiences of really actually understanding like i don't know i literally found out like i had it Christmas lunch with my grandpa and I just attacked him with questions. And I only found out that, you know, my great granddad's name was Harold Sidney. I was like, it's a beautiful name. And he was a really good dancer. He was the youngest out of, you know, uh, nine people. He was the youngest child. And he was an amazing dad who just ha wanted everyone to have the best time. And he was never angry or frustrated. And he was a beautiful person. And I was like, why? <laughs> I don't know any of this <laughs> stuff, you know what I mean? Like, how good? And it just, when I was talking about his traits and what he was like, it just gave me a lot of clarification. Um, which I think is super beneficial. So I really love that for a mindset. Yeah, it's powerful, isn't it? Like just to think future as well as like what's going to happen, like and where we are now, like even looking back at our dads, like it's like where they've come from and what we're trying to teach them with technology. We're like, why don't you use advanced? Like, but now it's like <laughs> our kids are going to be saying there's something to do. Like, why are you still doing that? Man? Like, <laughs> stop writing damn emails. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I want to be across all the stuff that they're yeah, on. Yeah, 100%. Like, I want to be like more advanced than they are, hopefully. I want to Try be like, right up to date with it. Yeah, I want to be <laughs> right up to date. Yeah. Um, so yeah, last question, man, as I'd like you to challenge everyone who's listening. What, what do you think is special and unique about the Set the Standard community? Well, network has been massive for me, just reaching out and actually linking up with people and having them question and keep you accountable of who you are and who you want to be because we're very open in the group of what we want and that's what the worksheets probably open you up to be really vulnerable and who you want. So then it's it, they keep you accountable because they really know you on that wavelength. And like because you meet people new so you don't – like you're not talking to an old mate or an old friend of like – all right, I want to do this. And they're just like, oh, he said this before. He won't do it. Like, so they actually keep you accountable of who you want to be. Um, so that's been powerful, like, to actually, yeah, talk to a few of them and actually, like, it's nearly reintroducing yourself, but on a version of who you want to be. Oh, damn. I like yeah. That. So what it's else? been good. 
to just know people as well and just it's been hard for me but like and you've put the pressure on me a few times just to reach out just message people and that same thing come back to is what i said at the start like i don't validate myself enough and that's one thing we've been working on to like start validating myself that i actually do have can talk to people and not just try let them help me as well and let me help them crazy and what's one challenge you like to challenge people to do after listening to this here's one action point guys <laughs> Uh, just reach out to people you know and probably try to find your purpose and your why. Like really ask yourself, just write on a bit of paper and really ask yourself why you want to live and what you want to live for. There you go, guys. You can pause this. You've got your notes out on your phone. Why do you want to live and what do you want to live for? And reach out to people. Asking for help you, Jay. Yeah, 100%. Just ask for help. Like it's hard to do and sometimes it'll shut your ego down. But everyone in a business or in a workplace there's like they say what is it 95 percent rule like 95 percent of your job someone else can do five percent some you can only do so it's just reaching out and asking for the help it's crazy so So where can people find you uh instagram tyler Justin. so hit me up um yeah is that what isn't it tyler underscore yeah tyler because we did change it (laughs) we had a bit of an instagram reinvamp which was even that when i was doing that and you made me change my bio i was like damn man this is scary (laughs) so yeah it's just yeah little things like that you're worried about what everyone else thinks so yeah yeah Yeah, it's tyler underscore juiston underscore love that and last name's j-o-o-s-t-e-n and what's your business what do you guys specialize in uh enc joinery so we're located in melbourne and we're yeah architectural cabinet makers we say so yeah high-end joinery so yeah work for like high-end clients, builders, and specialise in that side of things. So everything's different we do and keeps it interesting. I love it so much. Keep inspiring, bro, and thanks for coming on. Uh, Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Hell yeah.